Hi, my name is Rakesh Agarwal. I am with Trophy Stone Distributes Profession in the School of Chemical Engineering at Purdue University. With me is Professor Rex G. Rex Rapolitis, who is Burton and Catherine Gage Distributes Professor in the School of Chemical Engineering at Purdue University. Rex is this year's uh, is named as this year's John M. Prostitz Institute Lecturer, and uh, he will be speaking at this meeting on the subject of process engineering contributions in pharmaceuticals. And uh, with that, my Rex, we all are looking forward to your, your talk. And uh, but I'm just curious, what got you interested in pharmaceuticals? Well, it's a it's a long history um, because you know I've been in the profession for a relatively long time. Um, but it started early in my academic career when I joined Purdue, uh, and uh, I was mentored by a senior faculty member who was very active in uh, working with the fine chemicals um, uh, and consumer products and, and pharma industry. And he said, well, you know, Rex, you're, you're into optimization and modeling and mathematics, and this sector needs help. Uh, so, um, so we started working in this area, uh, and of course the characteristics of that sector, which includes pharma, is that they use batch processing. So the mathematics inherently gets a little more complicated. So uh, that was the in incentive. Uh, we got started, we developed some uh, industry consortia to build tools and all of that. Uh, and then at some point we had to abandon it because uh, the energy crisis that arose. and and that provide a really interesting opportunity to learn about particular systems called coal. Uh, and when I think back of it, it was actually a great learning experience that one learned that sort of aggregate matter. Uh, when that passed, um, then a very good colleague in industrial pharmacy at Purdue, Purdue has a very strong industrial pharmacy department, uh, he said, you know, the climate is right in this industry. They're beginning to take manufacturing seriously. Uh, so uh, why don't we pool, you know, forces? And, and so that's how we got started. Uh, there was a Purdue Center formed. Um, there was a national organization uh, that Purdue helped launch. Uh, and of course, this engineering research center that I was uh, able to join in with colleagues at Rutgers. And so that's kind of the, the history. So of course, I'm aware of once I arrived at Purdue University, how you, I saw you enthusiastically jump into ERC, and I've been observing you for all these years. And uh, I see you'll be sharing a lot of contributions which process systems engineering is making today. Could you share some of them, those contributions, with the with the audience, like which you'll be making today? Well, I mean the 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 requirements. Um, for that industry, it's like any other industry, you needed to do modeling, uh, you needed to worry about design, uh, and you needed to support manufacturing. And so uh, that's what process systems engineering is all about. Uh, I think uh, um, that industry is now in an exciting transition from traditional batch to continuous. Uh, and, and that again provides some really interesting opportunities to make contributions. and, and uh, both the center and the group and my colleagues at other universities uh, and the industry at large has really been jumped very enthusiastically into, into you know, advances in that field. Well, that's very nice. So it seems like there's multifaceted contributions to the, to the pharmaceutical industry. And however, if you wanted to share just one single most biggest contribution which you think you have made or, or you think has been made to pharmaceuticals, what would that be? Well, I think the, the, the biggest single contribution is really um, the modeling of process operations and to use those models to really support manufacturing. I think, to me, that's really the big step forward. Uh, and there, is, there are ancillary pieces to it. Uh, when you use models uh, to support manufacturing, you also have to worry about sensing. So some of the things uh, I was really got excited about as a non-experimentalist is actually working with students on uh, innovative ways to measure stream properties online. So for example, um, uh, collaborated with Professor Harris and our faculty on use of microwaves to measure online properties, collaborated with uh, a small company in Lafayette to use x-rays to measure mass flow rate of particulate streams. So, 
things that you never really think about you need, but in order to address the, the, the real industrial problem, you've got to have these tools. So uh, for, uh, for someone that's, uh, that's you know, computer bound, it was kind of interesting to get into actually experimental things as well. So. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, it simply tells us that today is when you're making an improvement in industry, they're so multifaceted and you get to collaborate with different people, interact, bring different knowledges, and of course, like each one of us is going to benefit from that pharmaceutical health care. It touches all of us, so it is really great to see that uh, people like you are contributing to this great deal to improve this. So, so we would really like to thank you for sharing your thoughts with the United Institute of Chemical Engineering and Connected Committee, and thank you very much. Looking forward to your talk today. Thank you. So, and all of us are looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>